Let's uh, call this meeting of the Ospreys Planning Commission to order. Judy, you want to call the roll, please? Yes, Reed. Here. <coughs> Toby. Here. Sims. Here. Elza. Here. I'm not present at this time are Susan Stiles, so I do hear footsteps. Um, also present is Village Solicitor Chris Connor and Planning and Zoning Administrator Denise Swinger. Oh, one dog, we have an Aspen. Oh, and a Sims. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll let you get a new seat and I'll set it didn't take much convincing for him to dash out. <laughs> <laughs> this, this I was almost denied. I thought, oh my gosh, if I move it a minute late, I'll they'll, they'll be replaced in this room. But I heard the first part of the audience. All right. All right, glad you're here. Um, we have an agenda in front of us. Any additions, subtractions, reconfiguration? If not, then let's move on to the uh, minutes from the last meeting, November 9th. Uh, anyone have any changes or questions about the first page? Second page. The third page. I have a couple things on the third page. All right. Um, up at the top, fourth paragraph. The village at the end. The village is able to oh. uh, to limitations to impose limitations. Something of that sort. Yes. Got it. Thanks. Um, and then uh, I I don't oh, I, at some point the the definition of home occupation was said, but that's not in the minutes, so I just thought it would be good to include the definition of that is in, in the minutes, maybe. I don't know when that happened, but... It was probably when Denise was giving her summary of the findings. No, I saying. asked for it. And oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. So it was in that section? I think so. Maybe Swinger commented on regulations listed in the zoning code use of home, home occupation definition. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven paragraph. Um, and then I think that uh, Chris may have um, <coughs> gone back and looked into definitions. And he read the de definition of the home occupation. Okay. Sorry, go <coughs> Okay, anything else for us? No. Okay. Uh, page four. I think um, one, two, three, fifth paragraph was says we corrected this. I think it was actually Chris was the solicitor who made that comment about the uh, home rule overriding state rules. Yeah, it's not the kind of thing I really. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Uh, page five. Any comments? Not a motion to approve these as modified. I move to approve the minutes as modified. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Um, we have no communications, I don't believe. Uh, the next slide is committee and council reports. Anything to contribute that's uh, directly as well as this kind of uh, group? Probably just uh, a heads up that most of you got because the meeting, there's the extra meeting has been called for December 28th. Is that correct, Judith? That's correct. Judith? Um, uh, because of the very good news like of uh, Dayton Nailing Services, is that the name of the company? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, planning to uh, re move their business to Yellow Springs. And um, we literally found out about this, most of the council found out about it right in our meeting um, this past week. And uh, it seems like a very exciting thing, but we need to have that meeting. So that was probably the main thing that 
concerned council is uh, the special meeting that will be called on December 28th. Correct. Uh, prove is, and it'll be a conditional use permit, or is it's it a, a PUD? So a PUD. That's <coughs> right. Yeah. So it'll be um, it should be an, an interesting meeting and get to learn a little bit more about the business. Hopefully, are you going to mention the um, changes of? Um, not related to the PUD, the changes that they want us to make to our recommendation on the, um, is it an increase of uh, square footage? Oh yes, thank you for that reminder. Yes, I should have prepared for this. Uh, I'm not I'm completely unprepared for my last meeting. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I get by a little up for my friends, so I appreciate that. Um, yes, so we did vote down the two um, the two items that came to the council from planning commission, we voted down two of them because they, we felt like we just needed to make it very consistent, the square footage of the, uh, of the separate buildings on, on any property, regardless of whether they are for home occupation or for a dwelling. Um, because right now it would be if we passed one, it didn't pass the other. Yeah, it was like excel accessory unit versus accessory dwelling, and then yes. different square footage of, of, of more right due to the change that we were yeah. making to dwelling. Dwelling, right? It didn't make sense to me allow for more square footage for those dwelling when that's not really something we can control very, very much. Whether they might want to change it to a dwelling later on. It would just be simpler to have them have it all be the same. We decided, and it seemed like the only way for us to do that was to remand it back to the planning commission. So okay. that will need to come back here probably in January. But I suppose if it were ready by the 28th, it could also be handled at that time. But I probably wouldn't. I would probably just try to do the one thing at that one meeting. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Uh, citizens' comments, this is a time in the meeting where if you have any comments on an item that's not on the agenda, uh, you can address council and the folks at Channel 5. So please come forward and identify yourself more, please. Thank you. Uh, I request that you postpone the second uh, item on the agenda until the next meeting. I had submitted a comment concerning that and was assured it would be in the packet and it was not in the packet. You've had all weekend to study the packet and all of the pros for that application and you have not had an opportunity to uh, read and study and, and uh, research what I have asked uh, in my letter. So I request that you postpone your discussion of this topic. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Denise or Judy, you want to, can you speak to that? I do not have it. I, uh, I received uh, an email from Paul and what was attached, I printed up and put into the packet. It was a picture of the property. That was what I got on the email from you. I And I have nothing. I mean, I have it. I, it's, the 207 North Winter Street is what you labeled it as. And when I opened it up, it was a picture of the GIS uh, map. Uh, it was just an outline of what was like how many bedrooms and that kind of thing, and a picture of the house, a photo of the house. That was probably my mistake. My intention was to provide information for this meeting. It, it didn't, the information did not get into the packet, so. I'd like to have the opportunity for you to study it before you make a, a discussion and decision. Can we can we get copies of that and 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 and? Thank you. I also would ask that some material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Identify yourself. I'm Susan Evendroff. I would also ask um, to postpone any decision making on this uh, issue because I have not uh, had an opportunity for you to study the material that I have prepared uh, for you 
continue to study. It's three pages of densely written material that I believe deserves an equal consideration with the material presented by the people applying for the conditional use. And I have copies of that up here uh, available for you all at this point. Thank you. Made, have you already made copies? So yes. Yes. I have copies. Did you, did you send them in as well? Or did Were they sitting there before the I, I did not because I didn't have uh, that much time. And it took some time and some thought and some study. Uh, I have copies of this material for all of you if you would like to spread those around. Appreciate it. Thanks. And, and I don't know, I mean, Chris, you can maybe speak to this. I'm not sure if we have, um, if it's properly noticed, I'm not sure that we have um, a, a means or a, a requirement to, to postpone this. Um, but certainly, uh, well, we can take all the time we need tonight and then plot through this. And, uh, yes? Question. Can you uh, come up and? Can I just hear something? Voice usually carries. It's all right. It does, doesn't it's look so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Peter Price. I live across the street from the house. Okay. From on the second, the 207. Because really, this is some yes, comments, sorry. and it's really yes, not sorry. designed to talk about things that are on the. Yeah, so we're on the, we're going to come back and talk to this thing. This is in not, this not, I'm not letting me finish. All right. Okay. That I'm, I'm new to this process of just kind of getting the hang of my osmosis here. And uh, he said that uh, this is a this is a meeting required for so many meetings in, in the time period required for something like this to be discussed. Is that how that works? Okay, this is the first one. No, what he was talking about was noticing. Yeah, so the notice, it has to be, there's going to be a sign out front, there has to be a, advertised in the paper, um, um, and it has to have be, that has to be done uh, for a certain length of time okay. to be so properly noticed as, okay. a, as and, a hearing. And we just recommend it to council. Right. Council has to also notice their meetings and right. um, have citizen comment as well. So it kind of goes through you first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not a conditional. Not a conditional. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. So we can just apply, right. do it in we one meeting. Right. Okay. 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 I apologize for that. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to have a public hearing here in a little bit okay. where you can come up and address it. We'll hear from the applicant and anyone else who wants I to see. stand okay. up. And, and, and okay. Well, that's why I thought it was. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 So that's coming up. That's coming around. Thanks. So I don't know. I mean, like I was saying before, back to Paul's request. I'm not sure that we have any, any I, standing to just to, to postpone on it, something that was properly noticed. That's that's the way I feel. It was properly noticed. Um, um, I agree. You should go forward and have the hearing. The matters may arise that might cause you to continue the proceeding because of factual or quest other questions. But um, the, uh, the, the, the body should go forward with the agenda. I agree. Okay. Any other citizens' comments? Okay. So we have two public hearings tonight. The first one is for 423 West Limestone, and then the second one is for the 207 Winter Street. And we're going to start with the limestone. Um, and, um, and how this works is that we have a, uh, uh, we hear from staff about the application, we hear from the applicant, um, ask questions of them, uh, open a public hearing then so you can comment uh, if need be or if you, if you would like to. Then we close that public hearing, have more discussion, and then Theoretically, we uh, we consider a resolution and vote on it. So, um, with that, Denise, do you want to start yes, with um, um, West Lime? We Street? have two conditional use applications, Donna. If you want to put them on up, um, the first one was tabled in uh, August, uh, pending um, <clears throat> Ms. Howard being able to find out more information on the second meter 
that had been installed. Um, the code doesn't allow, allow you to have more than one meter on the property for electric. Um, she had water and sewer was fine. <clears throat> so she needed this amount of time to try to get to a point where she could have some resolution with it. And um, the second then conditional use is on home occupation. Uh, in, again, in this process, um, it was discovered that their, her daughter would actually be having some classes that she'd be holding there, which means that people would be coming to the property, and um, so it, she required a home occupation permit. And I did provide you all of the information um, on that as far as the requirements, and she met all of those as well. But I did want Donna to give us a little update on where we're at on the um, on the meter, and then also last time the the um, the uh, <coughs> it was tabled basically because she still needed to find out what needed to be done. I don't think this time we would need to table it. We could just make that a condition of use until it is actually completed, and I would follow up to make sure that it was. But if you want to go ahead and speak to that. Okay, I'm Donna Howler, and um, as far, I, I don't know if it's done or not, as of yesterday, or as of Friday, they had put in the new structure for the meter, and they were going to finish it, yes, or today, but I don't get home till after dark, so, and I got home just in time to come here, so I didn't get to look at it, um, but they were going to finish it today, so that all the electric lines joined in one meter. Should be done, if not today, probably tomorrow, but it's probably done by now. And the village's uh, electric superintendent, Johnny Burns, has also been in contact with Donna and has also been in contact with uh, the electric company that did the work, and he's making sure that they're gonna comply. Okay. Um, Anyone have any questions for Denise or for Donna? They were supposed to do this about a month ago, and oh, yeah. the electric company just kept putting it off and putting it off, so <coughs> that's why it took so long. Okay. If there's no questions, then we'll open the public hearing. Next time. So am I done? Yeah, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, with that, uh, anyone who has any comments uh, would like to address uh, Planning Commission on this application, please come forward and identify yourself. And Hello, um, I guess I'm speaking here. Uh, my name's Marie Miller. It's Mitzi Miller, and I'm um, live across the street from Donna. Um, I'm very much in support of uh, this parcel being adapted and changed. Um, I'm really excited that uh, it's a business. Our daughter has the opportunity to come in and um, set up a business and knowing our community and young people having the opportunity to start a business in town, I think it's great. I hope you support this and support um, the uh, accessory to the dwelling unit that she's asking for. I've talked to several neighbors. Um, I've been there since 90, living across the street from Donna. And uh, other neighbors uh, in the area are, are also in support of this as well. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? Um, before we... No. Okay. Well, um, okay, so if there's no one else that would like to speak, we'll close the public hearing, take a back up here. Rose, do you want to? I guess, um, should we go over any of the staff report before we vote on this? Absolutely. And I, it's two It's two separate applications, right? One, right. One, one is for the one home. One is for the home That's right. Okay. So we should probably take them one at a time. I agree with that. The accessory form unit first. Okay, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so, do you want to, um, I guess, Denise, go through some of the highlights of this? This ex uh, accessory dwelling unit was, um, I mean, the, uh, the garage itself was built before the code <coughs> existed. So it is um, a little bit, just a little bit larger than what is allowed in our new code. 
how power that's grandfathered in. Um, uh, the upstairs, though, the accessory dwelling unit itself tends to be a little bit smaller than um, the footprint of the garage because there's a, a dormer windows and it slants the roof and it doesn't have as much space in the upstairs as, as the footprint shows for the outside. So for the accessory dwelling unit for the inside, <coughs> it does meet um, the, it, it does meet the, uh, basically the square footage of the um, principal dwelling, which is, was like 1,344 square feet, and it's 50% of that is 672 square feet, and it did, uh, the upstairs did fall within that range. Okay. Um, and otherwise, uh, they're not actually gonna be using it right now for an accessory dwelling unit. It's gonna be $400 home occupation. Um, but she, you know, the owner does live on the premise uh, in the house, and then um, it is designed, you know, for no more than two people. It's an open floor plan. There really isn't a designated bedroom up there. So. And there is a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> have to have. <laughs> it's a little kitchenette, yeah. <laughs> I see the microwave in the picture. I don't know if that's required, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> and there's off street parking? Yeah, Sorry. there's actually, you know, there, she has a very large driveway. Um, so there's plenty of parking in, on her property. And she also has, it looks like, two um, off street parking spaces that are more recent, maybe. I don't know. They've been there a while. In the front of that. And actually, she has two across the street, which are mine, which I've given permission for her daughter to have use as well. There'll never be more than six people, and there's never been even that many parking, because most people walk. Okay. Uh, any more questions for Denise? Any discussion? I guess the only item I don't bring up is do we need to put a deadline on the electrical just to make sure that it gets pushed through and wrapped up? Um, I suppose we could. What do you, um, what do you um, recommend? When I was talking with Johnny Burns today, he told me he was going to put a deadline on J and J of uh, 30 days. Okay. Okay. So if he's already done that, is there a need for us to add an additional? Well, I, I don't know if piece? there's a need for you to because um, at some point he was he's going to say, look, I'm going to pull this meter. It All has to be done. I'm going to pull this meter. And it seems like that can yeah. just be handled by staff. Okay. So um, it looks like it's what you're recommending is that we approve with conditions this conditional use. Um, and just with the follow with these uh, findings of fact, right? Which just basically says that it's in conformance with our goals, it won't be detrimental to health, safety, welfare, that it is adequately served by public facilities, that it's compatible with the surrounding character, um, won't impede normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property for other uses permitted in the district. It will not like block sight lines complies with the zone of code and the only condition is that the sharing of electric has to be added in and that's that's just it's the only condition that's being placed on this. Correct. So I move. Can I, can I just stop you for a second before you make a motion to, and you'll have to refresh my memory, but did you, did you table by motion? Yes. Okay, yes. so I would just suggest that you untable by motion before you okay. take uh, the vote just for so Thank I you. move that we untable, that we take this off the table. Untable is weird, but we'll say untable. We untable this uh, the motion. Um, Does that mean a second to me? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll second that. Uh, Are we untabling the discussion or a motion? Was the prior meeting, the, table motion was the prior meeting, we oh, okay. table this discussion until Donna can figure out the electrical. Okay. Okay. 
So do you have a second? I you second. Yeah. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? Staying? You were here, weren't you? I was here. Yeah. Okay. 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 So it's back on the table. Okay. No, it's off the table. Sorry. <laughs> right. It's on the table. Okay. It is now open for discussion. And okay. I move that we approve this uh, accessory, dwelling. accessory dwelling unit uh, with the conditions as stipulated. The finding of fact and condition as stipulated. Do we have a second? Aye. Second. Judy, would you call the roll? Yes, Reed. Yes. Toby. Yes. Ozell? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Okay. Now the second one was never under consideration. Right. right. You do not have to do any untabling or no. <laughs> right. Okay, so same deal. Uh, we'll hear from staff um, uh, and the applicant and then open public hearing and then have further discussion after that. So Denise, do you want to start? The, yeah, the home occupation uh, must be uh, no more than 250 square feet. Um, or 20% of what your principal dwelling is, <clears throat> which was ended up being like 269 square feet. Um, in figuring that, um, because it's an open floor plan, I took the room, which was um, 19 by 18, which was, it's actually about 26 by 26, the whole building, but I took 19, uh, which was from the, the width that went all the way over to where the bathroom and kitchen begins, and then the length of 18 feet, <clears throat> not counting where that sitting room is. I would have, if I would have measured it all the way, it would have been 26 feet. Um, because that is where her operation is. It's, it's inside that, that section, the 19 by 18 section of the room. Um, in the uh, zoning code, it allows you to um, not count hallways and storage areas um, because it is an open floor plan. I took um, what is a, a general three uh, American standard is three foot hallways. I configured it that way, um, and then I also configured it the way it actually is, which is about four feet. There's a, a four foot path from the kitchen area, bathroom area to where the table is and where everybody works at. And about a foot, maybe a foot and a half, more like at the back where it goes into the sitting room. <clears throat> Either way, they both end up being below 200 feet. So it meets that. Okay. Anything else you'd like to point out? She um, just that the she has about one or two clients, maybe several times a week they have classes. They said the most they get would be six, which would be 18 in a week, and you can have up to 40 in a week or in that one day. Um, the classes. Um, Besides the classes, um, I asked also about uh, delivery trucks and things like that, and they don't have that, they're just not storing items there. So it would be like what any normal delivery truck in a residential area would be. And we've already talked about the parking. Okay. Donna, do you wanna come up and add to this? You don't have to. You don't have to. Okay. Uh, any more questions for Denise or any questions for Donna? If not, then we'll open the public hearing. And if you have any comments on this application, again, come up and address the microphone, identify yourself. And if not, we'll close the public hearing. Um, any further discussion? Any questions or anything we need to consider here?
Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I don't really have any questions. Yeah. No, you talked a lot about it at the August 31st meeting. Right. Really. Right. Well, if that's the case, then do we have a motion? So moved. A second. Uh, a vote to well, approve this right. uh, application. A motion. Let's I move. move. Sorry. I move to approve the conditional use home occupation permit permit um, as recommended by staff with the following with the findings of fact. Is that satisfactory? You want a second? Oh, oh second. second. Yeah, I will second again. Any further discussion? If not, Judy, you want to call the roll? Yes. Tells out. Yes. Toby. Yes. Aspen? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay. So moved. Mm -hmm. Took a while. <laughs> okay, next item on our agenda is the 207 North Winter Street application for traditional use. Um, Denise, do you want to start this discussion? Um, the uh, Planning Commission had discussed this on the same uh, application for a different location. <clears throat> However, I wasn't at that meeting. Uh, Patty Bates had filled in for me um, on October 12th in terms of what kind of questions were, what came out and what was asked. Um, she has um, reapplied for this new address 207 North Winter Street. Um, <clears throat> it is um, a unique business in that it doesn't really uh, fall under any, uh, it's not, it, does, it kind of blends between different uh, other things in the zoning code that is permitted. <clears throat> Bed and breakfast I'm thinking of and professional office. Um, so we uh, decided to apply for this under uses not listed, other, which does allow, in, unless there's something specific that says it is not allowed, you can apply uh, for something that isn't mentioned if it is like other things. Um, and so that's what we did. She, uh, <clears throat> I might even have her come up and kind of explain the nature of the business because it is unique. Um, this doesn't have any square footage requirements or anything like that because it's um, it's just using that uh, residential dwelling for a business professional office. Jennifer. I'm Jennifer Horner. I think most of you were here when I gave the presentation in October. Would you like me to give you the whole explanation again about what the business is? Why don't you give us the abridged version and uh, just to make sure people are kind of jogging some members. Okay. Um, I have Creative Explorations Women's Retreat. It is presently located at 253 Zinia Avenue on the second floor of that building, which my husband and I own. It is a women's personal retreat. Um, typically, I have a, an individual woman who comes for a retreat. I'm a licensed independent social worker. And the business offers two basic options for retreat guests. One is as a self-directed retreat, and then the other option is that I facilitate retreats. And that facilitation service is um, typically meeting with the guest um, for a two-hour block of time. Um, and as I said, typically I have an individual. <laughs> I have an individual woman who comes, but um, sometimes there are two, at most, um, 
three women who come and stay. And my request for the conditional use permit was to move that business from the hub of downtown. Um, my husband and I have been talking about selling the downtown building and then being able to move the retreat to another location. And I was here in October. You approved that um, conditional use in a residential district um, for Herman Street. And in the interim, this property at 207 North Winter became available. It actually has two bedrooms um, and um, is actually a more ideal location for my guests. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated about it is its proximity to downtown, which rather than walking all the way from Herman Street, it's easier for the guests to get to restaurants and shops from Winter Street. Um, some questions that I have had, um, sort of um, questioning exactly what a women's retreat is, um, giving assurance that it's not um, crisis intervention services, it's not a halfway house. Um, the women who come are all um, highly functional women. It's primarily um, a contemplative, reflective, spiritual retreat. Um, the uh, request to move into a residential area, I think is very compatible uh, with the business. Um, again, there's gonna be no increased traffic. There's not gonna be any wild craziness. There's no noise. Um, the amount of traffic or activity that would be in that location would be less than what one would typically experience if it were residents. So. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? I have a couple. Uh, okay, 300, 365 days a year. How often do you believe that there would be guests at the retreat? I would say that it would likely be a similar rate to what I'm experiencing, and it may be 15 days out of a month. And are those days typically during the week or the weekend? It varies. Um, the majority would be on the weekend, although there is some occupancy in, during the week. And, and you indicated that there are two bedrooms at but I think you said at most there would be three women who might be mm -hmm. spending the night there. Uh, yes, um, I would have the same situation. There's what I have at the present location where I have a futon. And I've had three women there in the eight years that I have been doing this business. Probably had three women there three times. So, as I say, it's typically an individual woman. Um, that's the vast majority. Maybe 20% of the time is when I would have two a mother and daughter, or sisters, or friends. And are the kitchen facilities used for making food? Yes. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Okay, well, um, if there's no more questions, then we'll open the public hearing. So, thanks. Um, so, um, if you have a comment, question about this application, um, here's the microphone. Come up and identify yourself again, and uh, and we'll go from there. Um, Paul, if you want to start, we can go through your your letter. And, and Paul Avangard, uh, this will be a little awkward. I'll be reading some and referring you to some. Uh, the first topic is affordable housing. Uh, North Winter Street has always been an affordable housing neighborhood. One measure is the county appraised uh, valuation. The average for neighboring houses is $132,000. That's right down the street. And the average purchase price were known on the county website is $61,000. There is a mix of owner-occupied and rental houses, but the rents I know about are comparable 
to nearby apartments that is affordable. Uh, and then I have a table listing the adjacent houses on the block with similar home ink houses and the average value is about the same. Your legislation has a term affordable residence or something like that with a very awkward definition which I tried to research I recommend a change to that because the HUD does not any longer provide that number. But that would be a rent of around $1,100 a month. And I don't know of any rents in that area that are that high. Now, I'd like to talk about another place on the, on the street a few years ago. This commission allowed, it's in residence C, the change of an affordable rental unit in the old jailhouse building into a business against neighbors' objections. That was followed shortly by approval of changing the second affordable rental unit there to another business. This was followed by conversion of the attic of the garage on the property, we weren't notified. Uh, and in addition, there was a garage on another street nearby that was, was added to that. Planning co Commission required off-street parking as a condition of the first, which the owner created behind the garage, but also went ahead and paved parking places on the street, as far as I know, without approval. I have never seen anyone use a paved backyard, and I go by there about once a day but have seen up to five vehicles parked on the street associated with those businesses. This is, was clearly not the intention of Planning Commission, but has resulted in congestion and reduced visibility on a narrow curve near a corner. The village has not enforced this condition of use and may not be able to legally. Please don't accept the condition for 207 that the village is unwilling or unable to enforce. Okay, this property, 207 North Winter Street, poses a similar parking problem. Management staff, clients, suppliers, that probably not abide by any parking agreements made with Planning Commission, and the village will not enforce them. Let's look at the parking options. On street, clearly not allowed in the ordinance to count toward commercial use uh, parking space requirements. <coughs> The neighbors along the street are jealous of the limited on-street parking, and I've seen keep off the grass, barricades, I've seen neighbors chase drivers off in front of their houses. That limits the possibilities in front of 209 to two small cars, if it were even legal, and if clients and staff were willing to park that close together. They would probably park up and down the street anyway. A couple of years ago, the village crew built a stormwater catchment between the sidewalk and the street along that block. Its design, or questionable, uh, depends on its wavy contour and the permeability of the crushed stone next to the street. Customers would complain about the rough terrain and snow plowing this area for parking would either be ineffective or soon defeat the catchment design. There would be a temptation of the owner to smooth out and pave the area. This would result in whatever stormwater that is now being collected being diverted down the sidewalk to the neighboring yards. Okay, driveway. Recently the seller, same as the owner of the jailhouse, replaced the driveway and widened it to the property line plus or minus a foot or so. It's hard to find the property lines in those old neighborhoods. Customers using the drive will be stepping out of their vehicles onto my property, slamming their doors a few feet away from my living room. Most customers would be reluctant to park behind another vehicle, blocking it in, or be reluctant to pull forward enough for another vehicle to park behind, resulting in being blocked in, like the jailhouse property. I've never seen more than one vehicle parked in the driveway uh, at the jailhouse. Result in practice, one off street parking place. The sur surface is currently coarse stone, which is somewhat permeable. Since difficulty plowing this for commercial use, which is suggested to be topped with blacktop, then all the rainwater falling on that surface would then run 
out of my property and probably into my basement. Actually, 2014.02 requires a use that whatever use of a building lot or lot is changed to another classification of use, off street parking facilities shall be provided. And those are the words from the legislation. This seems to rule out on street parking by your clients and staff. Further, off street parking lots shall meet the setback requirements applicable to parking, listed as at least three feet to any adjoining property line. Other requirements in the document state driveway shall not be located closer than five feet or 25 feet, depending on where you look. The construction of any parking lot shall be paved with an asphalt or concrete binder and shall be graded and drained so as dispose of water, surface water which might accumulate. Surface water from parking areas shall be managed in accordance with the village engineering standards. Those are words from the document. This is especially important to me as runoff from this drive will threaten my neighboring property. Uh, section E states when land is developed or redeveloped and or the surface characteristics of the property change, increased impervious surfaces, site like grading for instance, these activities shall not result in additional stormwater runoff flowing to additional property. So some disposal of stormwater would be required. How many parking places are required? Clearly more than two or three. Here are some requirements listed for somewhat similar uses, if they were allowed. Boarding a rooming house, one space for two beds plus two additional spaces for owner or employees. The parking area shall be located in the rear yard and screened from adjoining properties. So there's at least three. Bed and breakfast, two for the owner and operator and one for the leasable room, at least four. Athletic clubs, so on, uh, but health studios and so on, similar uses, one per three persons allowed within the maximum occupancy load as established by the, the fire and building codes. This room is 80 or 90 and it's half the size of that house, so we're talking uh, many would be required if it were classified as a, a health studio. Business offices or professional offices of lawyers, architects, or similar. One for every 300 square feet of usable floor area, but not less than five parking places. Medical offices of doctors and similar. One for every 200 square foot or six. Back to the use of the property. Previous owner. Uh, completed a renovation of the interior, which makes it a comfortable residence. I would hate to see how it now converted for commercial use such that it couldn't be easily lived in. Uh, I don't think that you could prevent that from happening. Current zoning allows B&Bs here as a conditional use, where the operator is the resident of the building. As they understand it, this proposal would not have that condition. The same with home occupations, which need to be incidental and subordinate to the residential use. There is a minimum 1,500 square foot of usable floor area requirement, whereas the Green County property card lists only 1,183 for this house. And neither entrance appears to be handicapped accessible, which commercial use might require. The applicant does describes the intended use office lodging, not as a scheduled use in the table. That's similar to B&B and professional offices. The B and b has an owner present and other requirements, and a professional office does not usually involve unsupervised overnight stays. The requested use is neither fish nor fowl, more like skunk, as in medical and dental offices and clinics, which is a listed use addressed in the current ordinance and clearly not allowed in residence B. My understanding of the table is that any block that doesn't contain a P or C is determined to be not allowed. The pros proposed business use is out of character with this residential neighborhood and should be denied. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Um, 
Anyone else? Sue, do you want to? Yeah. And since uh, you haven't had a chance to see my comments written uh, previous to this, I would ask that you take this opportunity to read them. And then I can respond to any questions that you might have. There's a blind corner, there's a lot of traffic, 
It's on safe routes to school. There is not a sidewalk on the other side of the street. So the kids from the whole Northwood, whatever it's called, development, walk down either that street or Stafford Street to get to Mills Lawn. And the way the parking is configured, they're not visible for many parts of that, uh, at that three-way intersection. There's a curve. If cars are parked there, they're walking between, you know, with the cars are between the sidewalk. Uh, it, it, it is a worry to me that all, a lot more traffic, a lot more parking just makes that a less safe uh, walking to school, traffic, and that kind of thing. And I would like you to keep in mind that you can decide things however you think you should. I would like to know what your thinking is uh, as you make your decision. I think that would be helpful to everyone. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Again, inter inter identify yourself for the folks out in the... Peter Price. I live across the street, 206. And I'm one of the people, Paul mentioned some of his side comments. I'm one of the people who put the barricade tape across from my yard at least twice a year to keep the visitors to the village from parking on my lawn. And I have no recourse because the village has a right of way on the paved area of the road, which is part of the problem on, on, on the other side of the street, which Paul talks talk about. And another caveat, I happen to be the previous owner or the current owner of 207. I'm on the southern field. So I know where all the skeletons are buried. I know where, I know where all the underground activity. The village crew consults me when they want, want to know where curb stops are and stuff to that property because I know where everything is. And uh, I just read over Paul's comment on parking. I agree with him 100 percent from Sue's comment about, about, about children. Uh, my uh, front living in the window faces Winter Street. And the pedestrian traffic on, on Winter Street and that sidewalk is heavy. Especially going to and from school and there's a lot of kids, very young kids, parents taking their kids on bikes down the street. And um, when I lived at 207, had I been able to do so, I probably would put some money into 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 the all street parking myself, and the paving and drainage and stuff like that. But because the gravel area between the sidewalk and Winter Street is all village right away, you know, there's no point in me putting something into the village, you know, tank paint or so. I didn't bother. Same thing with the front yard of the current house I have. You know, I've got no sidewalk. I'm not about to put a sidewalk in the village and certainly I'll put one in and if they want to, I'll sell them, I'll sell them the extra land if they need it. But, uh, you know, it's, and as far as 207, the, uh, the GIS information from the county is hopefully out of date as far as the, the aerial photographs anyway. I know what that house in the garage looks like inside. I monitored that it was being built and reconstruction. Uh, the, the photo on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the county site for the garage showed it to be a full length two car garage at the part of the end Well, the garage has since been shortened since when that photo was taken. And it's easily half the length of what it was, presumably, so it could be more room for parking the gravel. Uh, but you know, I don't know that for sure. But uh, you know, the county's county's information's out of date. Paul's mention of square footage is, is is based upon what the county says. And I would I would venture to say that the square footage of living area inside the house may be different from what 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 back what's listed in, in, in the county, current county record. Depends on when 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 and if it was inspected by the county. So you know, just as far as you know, some, trying to give you some feedback, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, I do agree with Paul and Sue. And, 
you know, so just to give me some more information for everybody who works with it, including the young Thanks. Okay, uh, anyone else? Could I have one thing? Sure. I didn't re recruit Pete. Uh, I didn't go through the neighborhood to get endorsements for my position. I did look at the list of uh, people who uh, signed on to the application. Uh, several of them are live in residence C. Uh, several, several of them are renters who have a little lower investment in the neighborhood because they can move if they want. Uh, and one of the, the people that endorsed this application uh, is the builder, is the uh, current owner who lives several blocks away. And uh, one of the, the endorsements is for an occupant of a building which is more a, uh, a piece of work in process than a resident that's been under revision for at least 40 years. Uh, so it's very interesting, but not characteristic of the neighborhood. Thank you. Oh, uh, the Village of Yellow Springs and Home Inc. just uh, invested $150,000 or so, similar price, in affordable residence on Cemetery Street. I'm sure they would not come before you asking to convert that into a business. We need our affordable housing. Thanks, Paul. Okay, uh, anyone else? Uh, Sure. I guess my my overall comment um, is that the the arguments in opposition seem generally to me to indicate a lack of understanding or complete comprehension about what it is I'm proposing to do, because many of the arguments are irrelevant or hypothetical, um, not at all an issue for this business. Um, the last emphasis on the affordable housing, we paid $185,000 and that was a negotiated price. So that is not in this range of affordable housing that is being emphasized. Um, I um, attempted to go to all of the neighbors and I actually spoke with the woman who is the renter for the Avondroths, <clears throat> and Elise said she has absolutely no issue with this. She's the one who lives there, um, and it's my understanding she's a long-term resident. Um, so uh, the opposition that I'm hearing seems to be based more on, um, to a large extent, philosophical or political um, preferences and um, the actual situation of having a retreat in that location is not gonna negatively impact the neighborhood in the way that is being hypothesized that it will. Um, do you have any other comments to add clarification? Well, we're not going yeah. to. Sorry, if you could come up and introduce yourself. Otherwise they they can't hear you. Okay. On channel five. Uh, Charles Sides. Just a comment about the delivery trucks and all the commercial aspects. Jenny has none of that in her retreat. We were talking about one car in the driveway. Jenny shows up and she <coughs> spends two hours with the guest and she comes back home. <coughs> if there are two women there, they often come together where there might be two cars. The garage was moved back so that both cars can be in the driveway. Uh, we don't plan to um, pave the driveway. We're not going to be slamming doors to bother the, the tenant of their property. So it just seems almost irrelevant to what we're asking for in terms of use of this building. Thanks. May I respond? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of my comments relate to the history that we have had <coughs> with that neighborhood. We've been part of that neighborhood for the 50 years that we've lived in Yellow Springs. 
uh, <coughs> that property is one that we are heavily invested in. It's, it's we've taken uh, care to be good neighbors and we ask for good neighbors in return. Our experience has not been that great because when the 111 building was for when they, they first approached uh, commission on the 111 building to get an exception, that was granted. And then there was another one granted. And then there was another one granted or maybe not even addressed. And my concern is there is nothing in this, uh, in a conditional use that, that prevents different interpretations of what's allowed by different owners or even the current owner. There's no way to enforce if they're only going to have a couple of people staying over or are they going to have people uh, staying over for a long time, several weeks. We, there's no way we can, we can uh, protect that neighborhood from being eroded away and then other potential purchasers who can come up with more money than a small family can, just starting out. That whole uh, neighborhood is really at risk of being changed by creep into a commercial district. That's what has happened on Walnut Street near that, the Dayton Street corner. Uh, that was a residence and now there's a lot of uh, pressure on that particular area. There's the same kind of pressure all over in that older section of town to, to use these much less expensive properties to, for businesses, and you just basically price uh, low income or modest income people right out of the market in those houses. Um, and I, I, so my concern is what will happen, what may happen, and preventing the, the creep and the erosion of that neighborhood to not small family startups rentals for lower income people, but to, you know, this or that or another business. There are already two, sh uh, uh, one short stay uh, lodging, and this is a proposal for another one three, three doors away. Uh, that does talk about what can, what's, what can happen in, a, in an otherwise stable, uh, neighborhood, and I, I would urge you to be thoughtful about what allowing this change to, to be made, uh, what effect that will have on that whole neighborhood. The jailhouse is on one side of the corner, but once you turn that corner, that neighborhood will lose its um, character as a family home place and I think that those types of properties are very highly valued in Yellow Springs but does planning commission hold that same value for not only the current residents but residents to come in the years to come thank you thanks okay uh, if there's no further comments we'll close the public hearing Okay, one quick one, please, make it quick. <laughs> yeah, my, my comment on after I hear what everybody else has said. Uh, that, uh, just in speak, speaking to comment on, on, on it being uh, a residence, an affordable residence, uh, there is actually, there's enough room in the interior of that building to put a third bedroom, which would, you know, increase the, Ability to have you know more people living to be small bedroom granted, but at least we'll be downstairs, not upstairs, but just where the two current bedrooms are. And you know, just just the idea of being a residential area, I, I, I agree with that 100. Um, percent know, My house is three bedroom. I live in it myself, but. Uh, a lot of those comments related to the, uh, you know, the other side of the, the street going to 
to the curve uh, intersection at the union today, which created a lot of those comments to occur too. And a lot of that stuff is grandfathered in. This is a piece of property that uh, you know who can can potentially you know be changed gradually over a period of a month here or a month there, and start making some of those conditions that Paul's mentioned about drainage and parking worse than what they are today. Something which none of the property owners are able to do anything about under current codes and circumstances. Okay, thanks. Okay, well with that we'll close the public hearing and um, bring the discussion back up here. Um, but let me just start by saying I think we need to be very cognizant of parking as an issue here. Also though in a bigger picture, this question of affordable housing versus business, there is a tension in the code and the code is written as it's written. Um, it uh, affordability is a strong thread that runs through a lot of what we do, but so is you know the effort of trying to support small businesses and 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 there's a there's a there's definitely a tension in the code. It doesn't uh, sometimes it's contradictory. Um, um, so so uh, there's there's more than one value at work. Exactly. We value both things. And I think they're number one and two on the in, in the visioning statement as to the two top priorities for the village. So I mean that's it's definitely a valid point though, and I I, I agree. And uh, no matter what happens tonight, at some point, you know, what is the you know where is the line, and, and and how do you balance those? And that's partly council's job. It's also the planning commission's job. It's a citizen's job. Um, and I guess one other thing I would say is, I think Paul, you probably know this better than anybody, is a lot of our zoning enforcement is complaint driven. And so if you, um, I, mean, I, I mean, Denise doesn't have the time to police everything or the multitude of former planning and village managers that we've had in the last 10 years or how long it's been. Um, but, I mean, that's the way I think we operate, right? It's, it's, it's complaint driven. So, so I don't know with that. Um, anyone, else, anyone else have anything to say? Well, on that topic, I, I think, um, you know, planning commission approves or denies conditional use, um, and it's not our particular job to go back and make sure that, um, you know, our uh, stipulations are met, it's staff. And if you know of something that staff should be looking at, um, I encourage you to go to village manager or our planning person. Also, sort of relatedly, um, what was I going to say? Um,
if the if there is that governments really have to have a good reason to deny property owners the full use of their property. And that's we have zoning codes that we can we can use to do that. And that's why this is a conditional um, use request. So um, so I I hear the concerns. I I share the concerns. I, I really like having houses that remain houses. Um, we need kids in our schools. We need um, people to, to live in our community. Um, and we have a limited number of, of houses available. We need more housing in general. I remembered. Are you done? Excellent. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, if you, someone correct me if I'm wrong, granting a conditional use does not follow the property in perpetuity, correct? That is correct. So this is not a slippery slope. And um, I, I, reading the two different, looking at the home occupation requirements, there's this great one, um, F, the appearance of the dwelling shall not be altered, nor shall the occupation within the dwelling be conducted in any manner that would cause the premises to differ from its residential character, either by the blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I'd like to consider using that language as um, a condition if we decide to grant this um, application. Rose, what is that you're reading? Yeah, um, sorry, I was also sort of looking at something else. It's so I, uh, in uh, section 126208, uh, conditions that must be met for home occupation, letter F. I know this is an on a home occupation um, conditional use, but um, I think we're sort of picking things from different requirements from different conditional uses. So 126208F. That's what it says. This is home occupation appearance. Any comments? Accessory bowling. Well, the parking is definitely needs to be addressed. Um, I don't think we can address the whole affordable housing issue because you put upgrade the kitchen and then you just suddenly added twenty thousand dollars to the house at the price of a house. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think parking is something that we do need to definitely address. Agreed. Okay, so the current plan is for parking to be off street in the driveway, which is longer than appearing, than it appears, as I understand it, it's longer than it appears on the, uh, the GIS map that we have because the garage was shortened um, since, since that time, is that, that's correct. Um, so two cars can fit bumper to bumper to bumper. In three this, easily. Three easily in that in that driveway, but obviously the first car wouldn't be able to get out and they're, they're parked in, in effect, right? You might point out there's, there's no fence, physical fence, between Paul's house and the Center. So if somebody did try to get out and couldn't get the car behind it to move, there'd be a serious temptation to let him drive to Paul's property, which if after a rain it would be muddy. I know because I did it. <laughs> but I fixed the rut. You know, we knew how to really do that. I don't, I'd like to make a personal request. Yeah, can you come up and... and oh, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Well, I've been hearing a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, approaches on this from, from both the planning commission and, and, and Paul and, and, and other people. And, uh, if there's any doubt in your mind beyond what you read and all the written comments you have or comments, verbal comments we made here tonight, then take upon yourself to 
walk over to Winter Street Drive over there, take a look at the area we're talking about. Pretend you live there. Pretend you had to deal with the things that we brought up. And then ask yourself the question, how, how, how would I want to vote on this if I would be here? That's my request, thanks. Thanks. So back to the, the parking issue. I mean, can, can we assume that, that an owner is going to, you know, like break our conditions? To, to make this fit and, and be very precise and clear and sort of legalistic about this, but I'm wondering, would you have these same questions in terms of allowing a family of a certain size? Would you say there can only be three people who are spending the night in this property? Um, that's a permitted use, that's a permitted use, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's different when there's a residence versus especially when the resident when the owner is not going to be in residence okay. um, and it's commercial use it just changes 
that's why it is. It does have to be in some ways kind of legalistic, in a way that we, we aren't legalistic about saying no. If, we cannot if have you more were using children. it in, in a res residential way, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. No. We, we wouldn't be putting conditions on. It. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not. It's not. Um, not permitting her to have four people there during the day, but you're, but the, you're saying the condition is three overnight. Is that what I'm hearing? I, how, many, how many rooms is it? Does it seem like it hurts? It's two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms on the second floor, and then there's an office on the first floor that, as the former owner said, it's a bedroom as well. Or could it be? It has, a, it has a bathroom attached to it as well. Oh, okay. He added another bathroom. <laughs> well, the other thing is, is do you, you can, we can limit uh, per week guests, or if that's, if there's concern about traffic in the neighborhood. I mean, those are all conditions that we can place on any approval if we think that's appropriate. Because we're, because there is no, it, there's no limitations on that we're mixing in that thing. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I would suggest that we use the limitations from home occupation. That's <coughs> much larger. I mean, that's up to eight, eight people a day and or 40, 40 a week. week. Yeah. yeah. Why is that, why would that be Larger in a smaller area. I'm just wondering. Most, most of the home occupations are like people that are coming to visit to to work with. Maybe you're an architect or you're uh, an electrical contractor, and you have people coming and going. This is a lodging thing, where you know you're having people that are staying. Okay. So I wouldn't want to use the yeah. It feels like eight a day. And that's no, not that not that eight could spend the night, but that eight clients. A day. I mean, technically, we've been allowing people, you know, 40, 40 a, week. a week, but really 40 a day if it's only one day a week. So, I guess, like, why? Because it's using the whole well, house. It's also residency. This is me. Okay. So, so it wouldn't be the same. Right. Okay. Right. And it's it's Not different hard. when you're at, you're in your home occupancy again. You've got the owner there, there, there yeah. all the time, and okay. having to be more more able to monitor kind of what's happening. Okay. So, so you wouldn't want. I don't think you want quite. You wouldn't want that high of a okay uh, a limit for this. I agree. Would we want to restrict eating activities as far as? Yeah, maybe. 
so that the so that the parking in front of the property is made available for only neighborhood use. Not necessarily, but um, I mean, one of the problems I think that um, one of the worries is that if you have two cars crammed in front of the house on the street, is there room for two cars there? Um, because of the fire hydrant, I think there's only one. One in front of the driveway, you can squeeze two cars there, but they're short cars. Like the I don't think we should limit. The one, okay. the use of the one on the street. No, we can't. I, mean, I don't know that we can really. Yeah. Um, but we've used it before. That's part of the condition. I mean, we can certainly, um, oh, I think we can encourage the owners to encourage guests to use the driveway. Why? As as possible. Well, just because then if they, I guess so, so that they're not everybody parking in the street in order to, to not have to deal with the, the front and back issue so that they're taking up the extra parking in front of other people's houses on the street. We, so, oh, I'm so just saying instead it's a verbal, of, a verbal yeah. encouragement. Instead of parking in others yes. on the street and in front of other people's property. Please park on your own property. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah. And okay. So what? Two, two people in the driveway? It's on your seat on your side. Come here. And not worry about that part of it. And then the other question I have is about do you have a sign or anything? No. Okay. So no sign. And we make that condition. Well, I think we can just leave it a residential sign. Requirement limitations, right? Yeah, still limited. What do you specify, though? Well, I mean, then but the sign. We can Chapman only specify. Right, that's what I was going to suggest. Why don't we just use the the B and B? I I suggest that we just use the B and B sign. They should at some future time decide to put up a sign. They use the B and B, which I think is probably the same as the residential. Okay. Sign one square, four square feet to two by two, or one and a half by whatever. <clears throat> okay. May I ask a question? Sure. What happens? Can you, can you help the mic? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. What happens if, in the future, like a year or two from now, the, the uh, it is noticed that there are more people staying over, there are more cars parking there. How do you actually expect citizens and neighbors to enforce the, the uh, legislation? I don't see how we could possibly no, you do don't, that. You don't, you don't, you don't you're right. Right. You're right, so we have to complain, mm -hmm. right. and how can we document a complaint uh, <laughs> it's a very, it's easy to say, very difficult to do. Well, you send it by email, and that's your electron, electronic take picture. Yes, take picture but, parking. but I think you're missing the point, is that what, would, well, what documentation would be required? What documentation would institute an investigation by the zoning people? How could that process of enforcement be initiated by the neighbor? You, you don't need to, there's no documentation. Is that the case? Yeah. Because yeah. I can tell you, we've already complained about the uh, parking in front of the jailhouse uh, and dribbling down the street. Um, not recently, but we did. And it had those limitations on that property have been promptly ignored. One of the parking places counted for their conditional use was inside the garage which is no longer available as a parking place. What can we do? Nothing. We don't have any standing to insist that they go back to counting it the way the permit requires. If you, if, that's my point. Yeah. Thank you. And I don't think we were aware of the whole garage thing. But it's, it's a whole 
literature. Talking to the village manager and documentary. Well, it, it, it got changed uh, to the village manager years ago. Right, oh, that's right. As far as that goes on. That's, yeah, that, that's nothing we can do then, person. nothing we can do now. Uh, you can complain to the village. You can complain to the new manager. Okay, well, all of them sounds <laughs> like you. Okay, okay. so, <laughs> like, but right. Against. So currently we are stipulating um, no more than three overnight guests. Um, these B and B requirements for any signage should there be signage in the future. Um, the uh, wait, wait one second. I'm sorry. Can you say that? Can you repeat regarding no overnight guests? No more than three I'm overnight sorry. guests at a time. Okay. Thank you. Did you get the rest of it, Judy? <coughs> and what is the reason why we're restricting the own I guess I'm, I mean, I, I get it for the parking part of it. Yeah. I think but it's primarily for the parking part. It's part of it. Just to keep the traffic. Just, but I mean, yeah. Because I'm thinking, because you could have, you know, we restrict people the parking that came together, together, you know, in a, in a vehicle. Yeah. You can have like four friends that want to do this. You know, and they come in two cars. Uh, you know, I don't know what's. Uh, would you s so instead restrict the number of cars? I think it really should be the cars. I can we do that? Can we say no more than two guest cars at any given time? When does it become a boarding house or a short stay lodging? <coughs> The, uh, the question that in my mind is, do you need to, if there's on-site parking, which you have, you have on-site parking, three cars, so the preference is that, that you use the on-site parking, um, and then that would leave the... Well, the but I mean, part of our job is to regulate the, the impact to the residential neighborhood, correct? I mean, like we... We can't assume that one is going to break our restrictions. I, I guess I would like more information about when is it illegal to park on street parking in, so, in front of someone else's house? Is that not allowed at all times? What are the parking restrictions on that street? I get the sense that there are none. There are no hours limitations. There's no, yeah. I mean, that's, that's another set of. So even doing that, parking in front of someone else's house is allowed in the residential neighborhood. So if that is allowed in the residential neighborhood and we are adding a, a non-residential use property conditionally to that neighborhood, I think it does make sense to restrict the cars coming to, makes more sense to restrict the cars and the clients. I agree with these, to, to this commercial, I, and we can pretty much only limit it to three because there's on-street parking, one on-street parking on the property and two um, parking spaces. Did, Denise, did you, rep, did you measure the length of the driveway? Okay. Um, because I'm wondering if three cars can actually fit before is there, did, did you say there's no sidewalk on that side of the street, or there is a sidewalk? There is. Yes. Yes. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, but it's only one on one side. Is it three before that sidewalk, or three with the car over the sidewalk? I would say that it's three beyond, because you can put two beside, the, that, beside the house, and then there's the space beyond that deck in front of the garage, and then there's the garage, so. so somebody can even park in the garage, and then there's still about three, three spaces. spaces before the sidewalk. So there's plenty of room. Well, we can't limit a car. I guess the garage actually does count if we're limiting the number of cars. Because you could park in the, in the garage, and it would be really to well, I, I look in the garage 
before I'd say that one way or the other. <laughs> what? I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm being devil to that. I didn't hear you, though. I'm he said he would, you would look at the garage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, can you, can you operate your business with, uh, uh, and your guests, uh, is it, is it too much of a hardship for them to have the, the cars parked in the driveway and that you're in, in the front? In other words, with that space being used and how your, your guests use the property that you currently have? Well, I would have. absolutely ask my guests when they come in to park in the driveway. And I, my preference would be, I would be the one to pull out front go in, work for two hours, and then leave. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to do that year-round. All right. So, well, um, if there's any so I'm, 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 com I'm comfortable with the space. three on-site spaces for the... Okay. So how do we craft that language? Do we say three guest cars? Three guest vehicles? No more than three guest vehicles at any given time. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't put a restriction on it. Mm -hmm. Overnight. Yeah. Okay. And using the B&B requirements for signage. Mm -hmm. You want to know the code section, Judy? Uh, yes, please. 1262-08. E2F, I believe. And do we want to add roses? That was what just happened. That's what you just did. Yeah. Uh, Almost okay. Like if now, if before you get to a motion, you, you need to make a a procedural motion to make sure that Paul and Sue's letters have been made part of the packet of the information that you've considered as part of your deliberations. All right. So I'd like to make that motion. So moved. I need to second. Second. Second, second vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we have a resolution essentially to accept the applicant with the following stipulations we're going to limit uh, guest vehicles to three in number and we're going to use the B&B &B signage requirements require that is that our resolution and otherwise what about the
be the standard used to limit any signage um, and that uh, the owner adhere to 1262.08 E5F regarding the appearance of the structure. Yes. Do we have a motion? And then all findings of fact as stipulated in the original document. In the recommendation from staff. Yes. Okay, any changes to that for Judy? Do we have a motion then to consider that? So moved. We have a second. Call second. Judy, you want to call the roll? Yes. Pelzo? Yes. Toby? Yes. Aspen? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay, so moved. Right. Okay. Old business, I don't know that we have any. Do we have any? Judy? I don't know. Do you, Denise? Agenda no. planning? <coughs> we have our meeting on the 28th. Yeah, the meeting on the 28th, I think we're just going to keep it just that subject. Yes, I think that's wise. And then the next meeting after that in January, the regular schedule meeting? We really need to start meeting every regular When is that, though? Um, there were there was a schedule that we put out the last packet. Yep. So it's second second Monday January. Are we putting the meeting on the square foot requirements on that agenda? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think what had happened is when um, the John had looked at it, he was only looking at the accessory dwelling unit, and um, yeah, the home occupation. It's a totally different it's section. It's a totally different section. Yep. Yep. But it absolutely needs to be the same, especially if you're doing a home occupation in it. Yep. So if you're dwelling in it, you can't have one size. Like that. Not it should it take about up. five minutes yeah. to yeah. Yep. make the change yeah. and then send it on back. Okay. Well, I guess that's all we have then. Um, before we adjourn, I guess I'd like to say thanks, Lori. You've been uh -huh. doing this for a long time. Yeah. Tim is ducking out on us as well. Yes. So I have one more week. I'm going to be here Monday, I guess. Oh, okay. So, so have we gotten your official resignation? I think yes. I, I look I just looked to see when everybody's terms was winding up and I thought yours was twenty eighteen or something. So no, not <laughs> well not early because you've been here for many years, longer than me. And yeah, he's the only serving member at this point. The veteran. We appreciate your many, many years of service. How many years? I don't remember when I started. You don't really remember. <laughs> I was about five. Bruce Rickenbach is still in charge. Wow. Okay, that's that's going back there. So that's when you have to calculate that. Yeah. We met in the meeting rooms A and B, were televised. Wow. And I got the bicycle committee chairmanship. I goes, we have a procedure for that, and they all look at me and says, "Yes." Huh? Yeah, so that's <laughs> kind of how it ran back then. So. Okay. So Great. um. Uh, when is it decided who fills your Typically position? the very first meeting with the new council okay. makes Which all the decisions the about the different commissions and the alternates to the commissions. So um, I, if, if I were staying on, I would certainly recommend that we um, move uh, Adam into Tim's position and look for a new alternate. Um, that would be really up to the new yeah. council. Yeah, so that's what the council has to decide. Okay, well, if uh, there's nothing else, thanks, you guys, and uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Not to be.